Hi everyone! In this video I am very happy to be bringing you a swatch overview and first impression slash review of one of the newest MAC collections. This is their collaboration with El Cid. So in this video you should expect to see all the products available up close and to see live swatches, including lip swatches of the lip products. On top of that, in this video, if you are an Instagram follower, I will be giving away products from this collection. The handle to the account is in the description box below, so make sure you go ahead and follow, and I will give you further details at the end of the video. And no worries if you don't have Instagram or use it, there is an even more massive giveaway that I have been talking about that will be upcoming, where there will be several winners, and you will be eligible for that if you are a subscriber on YouTube. All right, make sure you're not only subscribed to this channel and follow Laura Beauty on Instagram, but that you've also checked out the latest video on the channel. And that is for some new eyeshadows from Kaja Beauty that are available at Sephora. They are beautiful. So I will link that in the upper right hand corner for you to check out if you haven't seen it already. All right, let's jump into the new MAC El Seed collection. This collection is available through your normal retailers, Mac's own website, and places like Macy's and Nordstrom where Mac is sold. And of course there's a link to Ebates in the description box too to get some cash back on your order if you aren't already part of Ebates. The description by Mac for this says, Paint your world, the makeup artistry of trendsetting Mac cosmetics meets the vision of Dubai-based French Tunisian street artist and sculptor El Cid. Mac El Cid emboldens you to take control of your own image. And El Cid seems to be a very interesting artist um, in looking at the different pieces that he's worked on and in watching a short video that he has online. He seems to be inspired by Arabic writing and merging that with artistry and design. And you can see that reflected not only in the packaging of this collection, but also the bright colors too. And on the note of packaging, I wanted to show you not only the inside um, compacts, but also the outside box packaging. It is this bright pink with accented red or darker pink and black. It is a uh, very kind of a pop of color and design, very eye-catching. Let's start by looking at what I think is one of the prettiest looking products in the collection. This is an extra dimension skin finish in the shade Dima's Glow and it retails for $36. Once again, that bright pink packaging, very, very, very pretty. And the compact or the pan itself, absolutely stunning with the embossed kind of Arabic lettering calligraphy design. So that is what Dima's Glow looks like in the pan up close. I hope I'm pronouncing that somewhat correctly. So for the first swatch, I'll take an angled powder brush and apply it before moving on to swatching it different ways. And the shade is described as simply a warm golden shimmer. It applies really smoothly with good color with just one layer and using an angled powder brush. There's just one layer, very refined shimmer. Go ahead and take another swipe and layer. I really don't think you need a second layer, but if you want a more intense level of color, you can definitely build it up. That's what two layers looks like. And then I'm gonna do a finger swatch side by side. Very pretty. Definitely agree with the description of it being a warm golden glow. There you have it. You could even use it as an eyeshadow. Let's take a look at the eyeshadow palette in this collection next. It's called the Cicero Full Face Kit and it retails for $66. I was a little surprised to see it being called the Full Face Kit, but the description here says that it features a color wave of warm, neutral, and dramatic shades designed with formulas for the full face, and it features textures from frost to matte to satin for creating a variety of looks. So I don't know that it has a description that immediately tells me why it would be used for all over the face, of course, you could use any sort of eyeshadow shade on other parts of your face if you wanted to for some sort of face design or things like that. But for the purpose of the swatches, I'm going to 
uh, approach this palette as if it is an eyeshadow palette. So once again, stunning packaging. You have a clear lid on this eyeshadow palette uh, with the calligraphy design on top. It closes magnetically and opens up, and then you have your shades inside. Here are what the shades look like up close. As always, I do my swatches with an eyeshadow brush over a layer of eyeshadow primer. I will swatch these shades top row to bottom row, going from the leftmost shade to the rightmost shade. So shade number one is Shroom, which I'm pretty sure is a permanent shade. And this is a soft beige with shimmer. This has a satin formula. The second shade, I have no idea how to pronounce, uh, looks like Tebulbu, or Tebulbu. And this is a pink brown plum with a velux pearl formula. Third is Honey Lust, another shade I'm pretty sure is permanent in the line, which is described as a bronze dipped peach. And this has a luster finish, pretty flaky. Fourth is Sar, spelled K S A R which is a peach beige with pink sparkles. This is a luster formula. Also kind of flaky, but the color is really, really gorgeous. Fifth is Chot, described as a platinum metal. This has a Velux Pearl, it says Velux Pearl or Frost formula. I think it's more like a frost in texture. Sixth, I don't know if it's supposed to be Petit Lion or Petit Lion. This is a peachy beige with a matte formula. Seventh is Finjun. I, I'm thinking a lot of these are Arabic maybe words and I'm so sorry, I don't know how to pronounce them properly. This is an intense, warm, rosy brown with a matte formula. Eighth is Texture, which is, I think, also a permanent shade. This is a peachy brown with shimmer, so that's a velvet formula. Ninth, I think, something like Le Porte Bleu. Also don't know French, so it's not helping. And this is described as a bright, vivid blue. Doesn't tell me what kind of formula it has, but it looks like it may be matte. It's the kind of shade you probably want to put over a white base. Oh, on the back of the palette, it has an S next to this name, which means it's a satin finish formula. And now I'm realizing that it looks like these two shades on the end here are listed as powder blushes. Um, I don't have shade descriptions for them. I'll go ahead and swatch them as I would an eyeshadow, but then we'll go back around and swatch them with a powder brush to see what they look like. So this shade is called Gabriella. When I do have shade descriptions, the description is an intense, bright, cool pink. It's listed as a matte powder blush. So just keep that in mind when looking at the way it swatches, it looks like it's intended as an eyeshadow as opposed to, I'm sorry, it's intended as a blush as opposed to an eyeshadow. Next is Carbon, definitely a permanent shade. Black, matte formula. Handwritten, another shade I'm pretty sure is permanent. A dirty warm brown, the matte formula. Next is Carnal Charm. An intense orange coral, the matte formula. Next is Matmata, which is an indigo blue. Matte formula. And last is Vidigal. Remember, this is intended as a blush. 
described as a cool, intense pink, the matte formula. Okay, here are your, what is this, 15 shades, starting with the shimmering shades, going to more of the satin finish shades, and ending in a lot of matte shades. I'm actually quite impressed by the pigmentation of the matte formulas. Usually not as smooth as the shimmering shades, although usually mattes you have more opportunity to be buffing and blending with. So the pigmentation is good. These two Volux Pearl Finish shadows are super crumbly. Expect to get plenty of fallout with these. Um, that's just kind of the nature of that formula. So I'm not a super fan of the texture. I am a bit disappointed that there are so many permanent shades included in this palette, especially with having El Cid as an inspiration, the different colors that um, could have been included in the palette. I think it's a big missed opportunity to have included so many permanent shades. All right, let's look at how these shades apply as blushes. Now the pan size is the same as with the eyeshadow, so it is not very easy to pick up the product with this size pan. So we're gonna start by swatching Gabriella, and to prep the skin I applied a thin layer of liquid foundation and I set it lightly with translucent powder to try to mimic as close as possible the real skin that you'd be applying the um, swatch onto. So just to remind you, Gabriella is described as an intense, bright, cool pink. Both of these shades are going to have a matte finish. I feel like it does apply kind of streaky and patchy. Don't have a problem with the color. Now part of that I'm guessing is going to be because it may not be even on the brush, which is hard to accomplish because the pan size is so small. So let's do a second layer and see we can get a more even finish. So here is layer two of Gabriella. I feel like that does help. It's definitely a really intense color. And Vidigal. Of course, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. And this is described as an intense cool pink the matte finish. Again, you see, it's kind of uneven there. Let's go on with one more layer. I'll make sure the left side of the brush has enough product. Okay, so there are your two blush shades in eyeshadow pans applied with a powder brush. And last up in the collection, we have four limited edition lipsticks that retail for $19.50 each. Once again, absolutely beautiful, unique, bright packaging. And the tubes are also flat as opposed to kind of domed on the top with typical MAC lipsticks. The inside of the tubes also have that pink packaging and a more faint calligraphy design. This shade, again, I don't know how to pronounce it, Un Bicer, Un Caress, Declaring Love, and Maya Labelle. Moon by Sarah is a pinky nude with a matte formula. Moon Caress is a cool, dirty brown plum with a matte finish. Declaring Love is a bright, cool pink with a matte finish. And Maya LaBelle is, it says a bright red orange. I think this is much more orange than red but it also has a matte finish. All right, and swatched on the arm, those are your four matte Alcide lipstick shades. 
All four of these shades have a nice formula, even though they are matte, they're not overly drying. They're not really actively moisturizing either, but if you don't have problems with dry lips already, then it shouldn't be a problem. They are quite opaque and smooth in terms of the finish that they give, and they have good pigmentation also, and that classic MAC vanilla scent. Overall, in terms of this collection, I think it's a good collection. The most impressive thing to me, both visually and in terms of quality of the formula, was the skin finish, and I think it could be used as a highlighter or as an eyeshadow. The lipsticks were all solid also. I think the most unique shade was that second one, which is that kind of grayish plum brown. And then the eyeshadow slash powder blush palette was, I think, good. But again, I really think it was a missed opportunity to include so many already permanent shades and to miss out on Elseed's inspiration for some new colors. And while I think that actually the two powder blush shades work just fine as matte shadows, I think it's a bit awkward to have included them as blushes in that eyeshadow palette. So please share with me what you think in the comment section below. I think in terms of packaging and design and artistry, this is one of the best MAC collections in recent memory. But also let me know what you think in terms of the quality, in terms of what shades or colors attracted you, and whether you'll be picking any of these items up. As for the giveaway, the rules are that you should follow Allura Beauty on Instagram. The handle is Allura underscore beauty. It's in the description box if you want to cut and paste. I know that I will be selecting at least one winner to win either a lipstick, the highlighting powder, or the eyeshadow palette from the collection. I very likely well may choose uh, three winners and uh, depending on the first place, second place, and third place prize, I will be giving you one of those items, but I just haven't finalized those details yet. But if you do want a chance to win something from the collection, make sure you are following at Allura Beauty on Instagram. I will post to the feed a picture that is related to the L Seed collection, but if after posting this video and before the deadline, which I'll also put in the des description box, you post a comment on any of the photos on the feed to Allure Beauty's account, you will be entered into the giveaway. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a comment on the L Seed post. To find out if you won, please make sure you pay attention to the replies to your comment. We will choose between one and three winners and we will reply directly to their comment letting them know that they are a winner and then you will need to contact us through messaging or through the email address that we will provide to you to claim your prize. This giveaway will be available internationally. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video and thank you for supporting the channel. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.